Okay, Jesse, thanks very much for joining us. Can you, will you start by, if you could just tell us a little bit about your background, um, uh-huh. where you were born, where you grew up, um, and kind of the story of your childhood? Yeah, sure. Um, I was born in China. I was born in Beijing, actually. Uh, but my, my dad's from Shanghai, my mum's from Beijing. And uh, um, not long after I was born, I was brought to Shanghai uh, by my granny, uh, my, my dad's mum. Um, because my mom was um, like having working um, issues and you know she's going to different places and my dad went to the US to study so um, granny was the only person available to take care of me so for the first three and a half years of my life I spent with granny in in Shanghai and after that I went to Beijing to um, for primary school and um, and then moved back to Shanghai when I was 12 for like high um, to high school and so I was traveling between two places mm-hmm. um, basically all my childhood. Okay and did you enjoy your childhood? <laughs> yeah yeah very much so um, you know um, growing up with granny was great and mm-hmm. she's very caring and um, I had lots of friends when I was when, when I was there and also um, growing I th- thought like growing up in two different areas um, in China gives me a little bit insight of you know um, two different I can't say different cultures but there are different backgrounds Mm -hmm. and you know um, uh, things that you know if you you just live one place you wouldn't have known so yeah can you tell us a bit about uh, when you moved to Scotland yeah you know uh, when you came over how why you chose to come to Scotland okay. um, and this kind of the story of your arrival? Sure. Um, I came to Scotland to study. Um, I was working um, at, in Shanghai at that time uh, when there was a um, design, design college exhibition in, uh, in Shanghai. So I went there and uh, um, handed my portfolio to a few different colleges in the UK and uh, Dundee came back the quickest and um, and so I, I came to Dundee. Um, I didn't know anybody in the UK then um, and I came by myself and a, fr- a family friend who was in Wales at that time came to Edinburgh airport to pick me up. So he drove me to Dundee um, showed me around, um, you know, get me some basic stuff to start, like mm-hmm. pots and pans and duvets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then he left. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was there by myself, exploring and finding out um, everything, you know, about uni, about the life. So it was great. It was good fun. Oh, great. And, and you were in Dundee for two years, or was it longer? Um, that was the plan, mm-hmm. to you know finish the study and then go back. But then um, at that time there was a Fresh Talent um, Scotland scheme visa mm-hmm. that allows me to um, work, no, um, stay in Scotland or England I think as well, but to do, do like part-time job or full-time job mm-hmm. um, that was for two years so after that I got a full-time job and and work permit and everything so okay. one thing led to another mm-hmm. I've been here for almost 14 years oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and can you tell us a bit about your sort of feelings and expectations when you're moving to Scotland okay. obviously quite a big change from from China so. yeah it was a very big change and that was my first time um, abroad mm. basically so um, I was very excited um, this is a new environment it's completely new life mm. um, and to study something I loved mm. um, so yeah it was like all excitement there was no um, sadness or tears none of those <laughs> yeah, it was, was just a new adventure for me yeah, yeah. Great. great can you describe your sort of your early social life um and lifestyle experiences yeah um you said you had a family friend in yeah. in the uk um but did you you know what was your social life like when you when you got here um 
that friend actually left not long after I arrived, mm-hmm. so I was completely on my own. Um, the social life was fantastic, <laughs> and being in the uni and um, new friends, uh, and uh, you know, no parents around, no granny next to me, <laughs> so it was just freedom. Um, so yeah, I did study, um, but there was a lot of fun and you know, um, hanging out with with friends and you know, uh, exploring different places as well because. Um, because when I first came, um, I thought I had two years, mm-hmm. so I made most of it to travel and you know just see everything I could in mm-hmm. Scotland. Okay. Yeah. And did you socialize with people from different backgrounds a lot, or was it mostly from one community? Or um, I, well, my in my class there were I think for the first day there was only another Chinese girl um, and everyone else was either Scottish, English or from other European countries Mm -hmm. and uh, so I didn't have like a Chinese group to hang out with and I prefer actually to to mix with other um, like people from different backgrounds because I think that's like very interesting and then we talk about different um, cultures and you know what they do mm-hmm. and compared to what I do differently mm-hmm. and or I found actually a lot of similarities between different cultures which, okay. are, which was great yeah, yeah good. really good what were your in, um, early experiences of employment and education to uh-huh. sort of I guess after you need your two years what how did you find that in Scotland well I was really lucky to got a job straight away after my graduation mm-hmm. um, it was a local company in Dundee mm. and uh, they were they, they moved premises and they were looking for well I studied graphic design and um, mm. so they were looking for a graphic designer to kind of handling the design part of their it's a printing company mm. um, so I was I, I got the job straight away and um, unfortunately the, the company um, like was closed not too long after I joined oh, but okay. um, but then there's another um, a growth company mm-hmm. like uh, spotted me and um, got me there so I worked there for nine years wow. uh, over nine years yeah. so yeah so job wise I was very very lucky mm-hmm. to to have found them so quickly and you know with not much of a problem when you arrived in Scotland what were your thoughts of the culture of Scotland um, and sort of discovering Scottish culture do you have any stories or funny stories about anything that maybe surprised you Uh about it yeah it's it's so different everything Mm. was different Mm. Um, you know from what I I known um, from Chinese cultures and the environment I had Um, but I think the most interesting one was um, when I, uh, I think it was the first Burns night I had, um, and that was uh, there was a dinner and Kaylee organized by um, music society in Dundee University. Mm-hmm. So one of my friends, she was in the choir and she invited all of us to join. Um, so we did all dressed up and um, looking fancy, and, and then. We had a fantastic three-course uh, meal um, at this big hall, and and then after that they said, "Oh, we're gonna clear the floor and start Kaylee." So I thought, "Oh, that's great! Just a bit dancing, it'll be fantastic." Um, but then when Kaylee came up, and that was my very first time to see and to experience it, mm-hmm. I didn't realize there was so much spinning going on <laughs> and <laughs> running and everything uh, with that three-course meal in my tummy. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't great. Um, but uh, I still enjoyed it a lot. It was so much fun. That, um, by the end of it, everyone had their high heels off and mm-hmm. just running crazy in the hall and all sweaty, but a <laughs> really, really good laugh. Yeah, good. Yeah. 
Uh, it was definitely, definitely <laughs> a spinning experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some guys, they would really spin you until you like, like your feet off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice any uh, similarities between sort of Scottish culture and your own background? Um, yeah, actually, um, I think both Scottish and Chinese are quite like a traditional culture and then they keep their um, culture or their um, like, um, to not, not say habit, but what, what would you call it, um, like their tradition very close mm -hmm. and uh, for example, you know, Chinese always you know, they've got so many festivals and celebrating and all that. So are Scots, you know, you've got uh, Burns Night, you've got the Highland Games, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, the Edinburgh Festival, mm -hmm. the tattoo was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so all that, I think, um, and uh, I love kilts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the um, most manly <laughs> outfit you can get. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, I think they're, you know, in, in that sense, mm -hmm. uh, we're very close to our traditions and, right. and, and we still do them and proud of them mm -hmm. till today. And did you feel quite welcome in Scotland when you arrived? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very, um, I was, um, my experience when I first arrived after my, my family friend had left uh, was I would, because that time, um, there weren't, you know, FaceTime or um, like com like Skype or anything um, to communicate that easily um, over internet. Um, so what I had to do was to buy a like a phone card mm -hmm. to call home through a, like a landline, mm -hmm. which I had to go to city center to get a public phone and then call from there. So that was my routine for the probably first week, just to walk down, it would take about 10 minutes, um, to a public phone, call my mom and dad, say, you know, what I'm doing today, it's fine and all that. Um, but every day when I walk down or walking back and then uh, anyone I met on the road would like either a smile or say good morning or hello, you know, that was something I, I never expected and never had experienced when I was in Shanghai and Beijing, you know, like such big cities and no one look at each other and you just walk by, that's all. But um, when I got here, it was all smiles and, um, and then people like in the shops would even chat with you for a couple of minutes and right. just say, oh, you know, just ask where are you from and, um, you know, what are you doing and, you know, so it was a really, really friendly environment. Great. Yeah. yeah good. Were there any particular difficult situations that you found when you first arrived? Mm, um, difficult, not really. But one thing I would say was the accent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had um, some difficulties with the accent, especially um, because I arrived about three months before um, the, the uni starting date. I thought I would you know, enroll myself into English class. Mm -hmm. So just to improve before I start studying, um, which I, my English was okay, was like a pass all the exam stuff, but um, I know if I need to use it in, in a daily basis, especially communicating, I wanted to improve a bit. Mm -hmm. But then when I arrived, I found out that um, those course wasn't suitable for me. They were focused on, you know, passing the exams that were already passed. So I got myself um, a part-time job in, uh, in a restaurant and then later in a local pub. And the interesting part was when I was working in the local pub, there were um, regular customers coming in and they would like to chat with me because I was new mm -hmm. and I was like a Chinese face, you know, they were not familiar with. And they would talk to me and I didn't understand a word they were saying. Um, I had to have a translator next to me <laughs> to tell me what they said because they, one is the accent was really, really strong. And um, also they use different phrases for the things they were saying, not like a 
normal English like sentences, yeah. but it, different things. And third, it didn't help when they had like three, four pints. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but then it got used to it. Right. You know, I still don't understand hundred mm-hmm. percent. You know, some accents or some um, local wor- like words, but uh, um, I can manage now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the same for everyone, I think. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, every city you go, they have their own kind of a dialect yeah, kind of thing. Sure. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, sort of moving on a bit to your, your current life now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I know you, you're working at the, the Chinese school. That's yep. one of the things you do. Yeah. Um, what kind of, what inspired you to start out in the chosen field that you work in at the moment? First of all, I really like children. Um, I like to interact with them and then just to have fun with them mm-hmm. and so when this opportunity presented itself to me I thought I would give it a try and also because uh, my background is art and design um, so I, I took the you know the, the art class um, to teach children not just in how to draw but also a little bit background of Chinese culture, um, Mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. And also I teach um, second year Chinese to little kids Mm -hmm. um, and teach them how to read, write and, you know, speak Mm -hmm. uh, Mandarin. Yeah, so um, it was was good fun for me Um, at the same time it's also helped me to discover my own culture and tradition. Mm-hmm. So. And what, what inspired you to get into art in the, in the first place? Um, I, I liked like art, arty and crafty stuff mm-hmm. since I was a little girl. Um, so after high school in China, I, I started, um, I, I just did a course in graphic design and I fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. How much do you think your heritage um, impacts in the work that you do? In Chinese school, that's basically everything. Sure. Um, you know, the, the tradition and the, uh, um, the history behind the language mm-hmm. um, and culture. Um, it's, I'm discovering at the same time teaching others, you know, teaching mm-hmm. the kids. Um, so it's, it's just everything. Right. About it. <laughs> and and um, any any graphic design work or anything like that? Do you think? Um, not so much mm-hmm. in graphic design work, um, because I had to kind of uh, accommodate the local people's needs. You know, sure. unless it's Chinese related, for example, like um, Chinese takeaways or um, you know, cultural cultural sort of designs mm-hmm. otherwise mm-hmm. local business had to accommodate them to sure. suit their needs <laughs> yeah what is what um achievements would you say you're most most proud of that you've accomplished i think it just being here you know um to be a part of a, a different culture mm-hmm. and uh, to make my life in a different country i think that's that's the biggest achievement. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it's never easy to do for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not that difficult mm. for me anyway. Sure. Um, because it was mostly a really enjoyable uh, experience. Yeah, good. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about family life in Scotland? Um, yeah. Do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I I got married uh, one and a half years ago, mm. and uh, my husband is Scottish. Um, and so we always like we frequently visit um their his family and they come to us Mm -hmm. you know we like we love cooking for each other and uh, hang out and um and christmas is the time that we always spend a few days together and so um it's very close kind of relationship, similar to Chinese families. Okay. We we like to you know be in touch all the time and um, you know spend time together. So which is really nice. Oh, good. Yeah. And do you see your family in China much or? I don't go home that often mm. um, because it's a long journey. Sure. Um, if I do, I would like to spend 
a few weeks rather than you know one or two mm-hmm. um, it's just not worth the travel <laughs> um, but they came, they came here um, a couple of times mm-hmm. too um, especially that was that's a big achievement for my mom because she never never had uh, never been to anywhere before mm-hmm. um, the first time she was born she came here mm-hmm. and uh, then um, she came once and then she fell in love with it <laughs> <laughs> and she came back again and I think she's planning another trip back yeah. here yeah. What aspects of Scotland are most important to you, uh, that you most relate to? I think um, now since I'm, I'm married, um, I think family mm-hmm. um, and also I love Scotland's landscape. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I just, uh, there's so many different places to go and see and uh, um, I love travelling and looking at different um experience different kind of uh, um, adventures, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and are there any aspects of your own heritage that are important to you that you particularly hold on to while you're here? Um, yeah, I think um, actually after I came to Scotland, I became more interested in my heritage and um, Chinese tradition and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm more kind of um, interested to learn um, my own culture background um, now than ever before. So moving on a bit uh, to talk a little bit about Scotland and immigration in general, Uh I guess have your feelings about Scotland changed at all since you've in the 14 years that you've been here? It has become smaller because I've been to most places Mm -hmm. Um, but yes definitely I think I have um, from like a visitor um, becoming a part of the, the society and the, the whole um, country and mm. also I've made it home so um, the feelings have definitely changed. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel a bit a part of Scottish society now? Yes, definitely. Um, not only because, you know, um, I'm a family member now, mm-hmm. but also um, I think it's and I understand the the language now, <laughs> um, and also feel like it's um, it's my home. So um, I I take part in everything I could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was that feeling a gradual thing yes, that came along? Definitely, yeah. um, definitely because. Um, I guess just a different stage of my life, you being a student mm-hmm. um, and you know, an overseas student obviously, I was just there to study but then slowly when I um, start working and you know, get into the, 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 so, uh, like the society and um, that has changed. And how would you say Scot- moving to Scotland has, has affected your life? Uh, it has t- changed it completely. Um, I would have no. I, well, I wouldn't have imagined life um, like this mm-hmm. if I hadn't um, come to Scotland. And uh, I cannot imagine what my life would have been if I stayed mm-hmm. back in Shanghai. You know. Mm-hmm. So. And more generally, do you think immigration has a positive effect on Scotland? Um, yeah, definitely. I think so because. Um, well, from my own experience, I got to know so many people from so many different cultural backgrounds and different countries. That really opened up my mind, mm. and I think to um, you know to know and to talk to people from different countries um, does have like a lot of benefits in um, open up your own world. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. Great.